Hello students, welcome to Edupedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is fourth section of the chapter Morphology of Flowering Plants. In this section of the video, we will discuss about the inflorescence and flower and its parts too. Okay, so let's proceed towards our topic that is inflorescence. As you can see that this is a solitary flower and this is inflorescence. A flower is a modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem it changes to floral meristem as you can see. Okay, this is floral meristem. Internodes is a distance between two nodes. So internode do not elongate and the axis gets condensed. The apex it produces different kinds of floral appendages lateral at successive node instead of leaves. When a shoot tip transforms into a flower, it is always solitary flower. Okay. And the arrangement of flower on floral axis is termed as inflorescence. I repeat, the arrangement of flowers on floral axis is termed as inflorescence. Depending on whether the apex gets converted into a flower or continues to grow, two major type of inflorescence are defined. First is racemose and second is cymose, which we will study. Okay. So let's see that this is the arrangement of cluster of flowers, which we call it as inflorescence. So what is inflorescence? A natural group or cluster of a flower that is produced on a special reproductive axis, which is called as peduncle. Okay, so this arrangement is called as inflorescence. So this is cluster of flower and this is peduncle. Okay, as I told you that uh, inflorescence are of two major types. First is racemose and second is cymose. So first we'll study about the racemose inflorescence. Peduncle, it shows continued growth for indefinite period of time. See, this is the peduncle. It is showing the indefinite period of growth that means it does not have any defined uh, growth okay it grows uh, without any end okay so a peduncle it shows continued growth for indefinite period of time okay now this is the terminal bud active bird or active terminal bird it never converts into terminal flower please note that this is the unique characteristic of racemose inflorescence and this kind of uh, inflorescence is called as indefinite inflorescence because it grows peduncle grows uh, without any defined uh, position it shows indefinite growth so it is indeterminate and unbranched type of inflorescence in racemose type, new, <clears throat> new flowers, they are generated at the tip of the inflorescence. And there is no definite determination and axis never terminates into flower. Okay. Now comes floral arrangement in racemose inflorescence. This is peduncle axis. <clears throat> These are the flowers. So the main axis it shows continuous growth and it does not end with the flower that means there is no terminal bud that's the unique characteristic of racemose inflorescence so younger flower are present at the apex and older flower they are present at the base okay and this kind of succession is known as acropetal succession wherein younger flowers are present at the apex and the older flowers they are present at the base then comes opening of flower. See, this way it opens. That means the flowers which are present at the base, it opens first. And then younger plants which are younger flowers which are present at the apex, they open later on. Okay. So flower which are peripheral or lower, they are older and they open first. Flowers which are in center or near the apex, they are younger and they open later. Okay. And this kind of succession is known as centripetal succession. It is seen in Gulmohar and Kaisal Pinya. Okay. 
Now comes cymose inflorescence. What is that? See, this is the peduncle growth, uh, peduncle which shows definite growth. And uh, as the peduncle stops growing, it ends into a flower. That means terminal bud, it gets converted into a floral bud. Okay, it shows definite growth. See, this is terminal bud. Terminal bud, it terminates into flower. Okay. So this kind of inflorescence is called as definite inflorescence. And floral arrangement, if you talk about the cymose uh, inflorescence, then flower in cymose, it shows bicipital succession. That means this is the peduncle axis. These are the flowers, okay? So the oldest flower is at the apex and the youngest flower, they are present at the base of the inflorescence. So the flowers, they are arranged in centrifugal manner and the oldest flower is at the center and the younger flowers, they are towards the margin. See, this is the margin, okay? These two are margins. So younger flowers, they are present at the margin. As you can see, th that older flower, they are present at the apex and younger flowers, they are present at the base. Then let's talk about the opening of flower in cymose uh, inflorescence. See, Central flower is older one, okay, in case of cymose inflorescence. So, central flower is older and it opens first. And then peripheral flowers, which are also called as lateral flowers, they are younger and they open later. So, this is uh, opening of flower in case of cymose. And it shows centrifugal succession as I just taught you. And this is seen in clerodendron, okay. Now comes the function or the significance of inflorescence first is that conspicuous and attractive flowers it makes the flower more attractive for insects and that will help in pollination okay flowering period is prolonged because of the inflorescence it improves chances of pollination because it makes the flower more attractive for insects it helps in the identification and classification too. Now we will talk about the flower, what it is. Flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperms. It is meant for sexual reproduction. A typical flower, it has four different kinds of holes that are arranged successively on the swollen end of the stalk or pedicel, which we call it as a stalk or receptacle. Okay, I'll show you what it is, but for the time being, just know that flower, it is the most important, most conspicuous organ of an angiospermic plant. And it is highly modified and condensed reproductive shoot that is especially designed for sexual reproduction. Flower develops in the exile of a small leaf, which we call it as bract. Okay, if present, then that flower is called as bracteate. And if it is absent, then that flower is called as ebracteate. Okay, flower is produced on a stalk which is called as pedicel. Okay, if present, then that flower is called as pedicellate flower. See, this is the pedicel. Okay, here it is written. That's why this flower is called as pedicellate flower. And if absent, then that is called as sessile, okay? As I just taught you that a typical flower, it has four different kind of holes that are arranged successively on the swollen end of the stalk or pedicel, which we call it as thalamus or receptacle. So receptacle, it is a stem portion which is found at the base in the center of a flower. The internodes, they are short and it shows a stunted growth and the number of the leaves is small. Hence, receptacle is not usually a large part of flower. Please note that. And it is the terminal end of the pedicel which is swollen and it represents floral axis. See, it has four compactly arranged nodes. One is this, second is this, third, fourth. Okay, now these are highly condensed, which are denoted by red dots. They are highly condensed internodes. So this will give rise to calyx. This will give rise to 
corolla and this will give rise to androsium which is a male part of a flower and this will give rise to gynosium which is female part of a flower okay now let's talk about the floral voles see this is accessory voles okay which are those the outer two voles yani this is uh, sepal and this is petal collectively petals are called as corolla and collectively sepals are called as calyx so outer two voles do not take part in sexual reproduction and that's why they are called as accessory voles and these are essential voles which are those the inner part or uh, such as endosium and gynosium they take part in reproductive functions so it is called as essential voles accessory voles are a calyx collective form of sepal is called as calyx and corolla these are accessory voles now let's talk about the essential voles endosium and gynosium endosium is a male part which we call it as stamen and gynosium is a female part of a flower which is also called as pistil and carpel okay so this is denoted by pink in color now let's talk about the floral terminology students see this is a flower which has a gynosium see this is denoted by pink color this is uh, endrosium which is a male part which is denoted by yellow color this is calyx which is denoted by green color and this is corolla which is a collective form of petals and it is denoted by red in color structurally flowers they consist of four main parts sepal petals stamen and pistils pistils and gynosium and carpel they both they they three are same so don't get confused with that okay any flower that does not have one or more of these part is considered to be incomplete flower but if a flower has all four parts then that is called as complete flower okay so this is complete flower and this is incomplete flower because it does not have corolla it has gynosium it has a stamen and it has calyx but it does not have corolla hence it is incomplete endrosium see this is endrosium and uh, if endrosium and gynosium that means male and female uh, reproductive parts are present in a flower then that flower is called as bisexual and that flower is also called as perfect flower perfect complete flower it is also called as hermaphrodite flower because it has both the reproductive organs present endrosium that is the male part and gynosium which is the female part then comes staminate flower staminate flowers are those flowers which has only male part present within the flower that is endrosium okay and pistillate flower is called as um female uh, flower because it contains gynosium only and no stamen okay so these two staminate and pistillate they are unisexual unlike bisex bisexual wherein endrosium and gynosium are present within the same flower so these two flowers staminate and pistillate they are imperfect flowers so this is sunflower this is disc floret okay and it is bisexual it is the ray floret as you can see it has no stamen or carpel hence it is called as neuter flower so if so neutral flower is uh, sunflower because it does not have endrosium or gynosium cucurbita is another example of staminate flower and epistillate uh, flower within the same flower okay see this is the maze wherein uh, staminate is present in one plant body and pistillate is present in another plant body okay so that means cucurbita it also shows pistillate flowers in another flower and staminate flowers in another flower 
or in another plant body okay so plant that bear both types of unisexual flowers they are called as monoecious okay mulberry mulberry also has a staminate flower in another plant body and pistillate in another plant body okay so it is also called as monoecious plant male flowers they are on one plant and female flowers they are on another plant okay plant that bear only one type of unisexual flowers they are called as dioecious unlike monoecious plant which i just taught you before mulberry plant okay so this is a staminate flower as you can see this is the male tree that means it has only the endosium part present within it and this is the date palm which has only female reproductive organ present which we call it as pistillate flower and hence it is called as female tree and this is called as dioecious plant see mango plant is bisexual because it has both endosium and gynosium see it has staminate and it has and it is sometimes considered as neuter also so mango it shows it sometimes shows bisexual it sometimes shows only male tree that is staminate and it sometimes shows neuter that means uh, that does not have uh, uh, endosium and gynosium okay so such kind of trees or flowering body is called as polygamous now we'll talk about the insertion of floral voles position and arrangement of floral voles with respect to gynosium on thalamus there are three basic types first is hypogyny second is perigyny and third is epigyny okay we'll talk how it is so we'll talk about the hypogyny first thalamus is convex as you can see it is not concave it is convex in na nature or conical ovary is superior because ovary is situated just above the thalamus see this is the thalamus and this is the ovary so ovary is superior in case of hypogyny and sepal petals and stamen they are inserted below ovary okay they are inserted below ovary see this is calyx this is corolla this is stem in it so they are inserted below ovaries hence it is called as hypogyny below gyny means gynosium i hope it is clear to you now now we'll talk about an example of hypogyny which is hibiscus okay we'll talk about the perigyny now what is perigyny this is a thalamus which is cup or saucer shaped ovary is semi inferior because it is within the thalamus <clears throat> sepal petals and stamen they arise from the rim of the cup and they lie around the ovary as you can see this is the ovary and this is the cup like structure which is uh, thalamus so this is called as peri peri means around and gyny means gynosium okay so perigyny is that means gynosium it is uh, present within the cup of the thalamus or the rim of the thalamus example of perigyny is pea or bean rose okay now we'll talk about the another insertion of a floral wool and that is called as epigyny this is a third basic type wherein thalamus it grows upward that completely encloses the ovary okay it is this is ovary and this is the thalamus that completely enclose the ovary ovary is inferior in this case sepal petal and stamen they lie above the ovary as you can see the, these are the stamen this is the corolla and this is the calyx so they all are lying above the ovary this is epigyny that means above gynosium okay i hope it is clear to you now example of epigyny is sunflower as you can see this is thalamus and ovary is enclosed within this thalamus now we'll talk about the floral parts one by one this is calyx sepals collectively called as calyx see this is represented by green in color it forms the outermost wall they they are usually green in color and the function is to protect the flower in bud stage and it supports the petal when in bloom so this is the outermost or first wall okay 
So this is sepal. It may be in the free form, then that is called as polysepalous and it is seen in brassica. And it could be in fused form, that is called as gamosepalous and it is seen in hibiscus. Okay. Now we'll talk about the types of calyx based on duration. When sepal falls off as soon as floral bud opens, then that is called as caducus. Okay. This is first type of calyx and it is seen in archimon. Then comes when sepal survives still withering of petals, then that is called as deciduous plant. That means sepal it survives till petal withers off. Okay or falls off and it is seen in mustard. Even when sepals they remain even after fruit formation they are called as persistent and it is seen in peas okay and brinjal too. Now we'll talk about the modification in calyx. First is epicalyx wherein a series of a small sepal like bracts they form an outer calyx when it two calyx what it is let's see this is uh, true calyx and this is the another or you can say epicalyx that uh, surrounds the main calyx and it is seen in hibiscus so this is the modification in calyx function because they are green so they perform photosynthesis so these are epi sepals petaloid when sepals they are brightly colored like petals then they are called as petaloid and it is seen in lily see these are the petals which are colored in nature function it is help to attract insects for pollination pappus it is the sepal that are modified into hairy structure and it is seen in sunflower function it helps in dispersal of fruits now we'll talk about another role and that is corolla as you can see that this is the petal uh, and collective form of petal is called as corolla. It makes up the second whole of the flower which is composed of petal and they are brightly colored. Okay, that makes the corolla conspicuous and attractive for insects. See this is the petal and collective form of petal is called as corolla. It may be in free form so it is called as polypetalous and it can be in uh, fused form which we call it as gamopetalus as seen in Dhatura and polypetalus is seen in rose. Now what is perianth students? In most flowers calyx is green generally calyx is green. Corolla is brightly colored but calyx and corolla they are morphologically similar. In some flowers then that is called as perianth that means in some flowers calyx and corolla they are morphologically similar that's why I have shown corolla and calyx both in the purple color to show that they are morphologically similar so together they are known as perianth and this is called as tepal now what are tepals tepals it can be in free form then that is called as polyphyllus and it can be in a fused form which we call it as gamophilus and it is seen in this plant okay now tepals they are green they are sepaloid perianth that means it is uh, green in color it could be in a colored form also then that is called as petaloid perianth okay and it performs photosynthesis i repeat tepals they perform photosynthesis i'm to be more precise sepaloid perianth they perform photosynthesis and petaloid perianth they attract insect for pollination now let's talk about the endorosium which is the male reproductive part the stamen in the flower is called as endorosium endorosium it forms a hole that surrounds the gynosium and it is within the perianth and this is the third hole which is inner to the corolla male reproductive hole this is endosium okay which we also call it as stamen. A stamen it represents a modified male reproductive leaf which we call it as microsporophyll which produces microspores. This is stamen it is made up of anther as you can see this is anther and this is the filament okay 
So midrib like a sterile structure between the two fertile lobes. See this is two fertile lobes of an anther and that connects them lengthwise it is called as connective. So this is also called as connective. Now let's talk about the fixation of anthers. If both the anthers C which is represented by this yellow and orangish color it is these two are anthers and they are showing adenent type at, as it is seen in magnolia and in dorsi fixed wherein it is connected to the filament in this portion and it is seen in citrus plants such as lemon. It could be bassy fixed also which uh, is seen in mustard. In, uh, the stamen they are in the form of kidney shaped cells and it could be versatile also like this and it is seen in lily. Okay, So these are, were the fixation of anthers. This is polyandrous which is seen in lily. This is the cohesion of stamen students. Stamens they get united throughout their length. It is seen in cucubita and that is called as synandrous condition. Then comes Adelphi wherein filaments are united and anthers are free. See this is the filament which is united to form one bundle and these are the anthers that are free. So that is called as Adelphi and it is seen in hibiscus and it is monoadelphus wherein a filaments are united to form two bundles. See this is one bundle and this is another bundle. And it is seen in uh, peas and this condition is called as diadelphus. Okay because there were two uh, there. Okay. Then comes uh, filament that are united to form many bundle like this. And it is seen in citrus band and it is called as polyadelphus. Poly means many. Okay. Then comes syngeny. Filaments are free and anther are united unlike Adelphi. Okay. So anthers they are united as you can see and it is seen in sunflower. And this kind of arrangement is called as syngenous. Then comes adhesion of stamen. Stamen is attached to petal students. Then that is called as epipetalous condition as seen in the Tura. Okay. And then comes a stamen that is attached with tepal, then that is called as epiphyllus and it is seen in onion as you can see. Then comes a stamen that is attached with carpal, then that is called as gynostagium and it is seen in calotropis. Now this is the anther which is the upper swollen fertile part of the stamen. And it usually has two lobes. See these two lobes. Each lobe has two chambers which we call it as pollen sac. This is one sac, this is another sac and it is also called as microsporangia. M pollen grains they are called as microspores. Most flowers are dithicus that means two lobed anther are there. See one is this and second is this. So that's why it is called as dithicus. And few flowers they are monothicus which has only one lobed anther. This is one lobe. Okay. And these are these small dots are pollen grains. Then comes gynoecium, which is another or fourth inner wall that takes place in uh, reproduction. This is also called as pishil or carpel. It is female reproductive wall. Gynosium is the collective term which is used for carpal in a flower. It is carpal, okay. Carpal, it represents a modified female reproductive leaf which we call it as megasporophyll which produce megaspores. This is also called as pishil. If pishil has one carpal, then that is called as monocarpillary. And if pishil has many carpal, then that is called as polycarpillary, okay. Carpal can be free like this. Then that is called as apocarpus. Carpus means female part and apo means free. So it is apocarpus and it is seen in rose. Carpal can be in the fused form also and that is called as syncarpus. Syn means fused and carpus means carpal. So fused 
carpal as you can see then it is seen in hibiscus carpal is made up of stigma style and ovary see this is stigma this is a style and this is ovary okay so this is a stigma which is a terminal part of the carpal and it is very rough sticky in nature it receives pollen during pollination and it provides place for pollen germination here pollen comes and germinates the female part okay and this is the style portion this entire length is called as a style which is narrow elongated tubular it connects ovary with stigma uh, style are of many types terminal style as you can see it is upright position and it is seen in hibiscus it is of lateral position that comes from the base of the thalamus so it is lateral style and it is seen in mango it is gynobasic style which comes uh, little lower from the lateral side as you can see so this is called as gynobasic and it is seen in tulsi then comes ovary which is another crucial part of female reproductive uh, organ present in flower it is swollen fertile part of a carpel it each locule of ovary it contains one to many small ovules or megasporangia i'll show you what ovules are ovules they are produced on soft fertile nutritive tissue which we call it as placenta i'll explain what it is see this is the transverse section of ovary for any better understanding it is always advised to take a transverse section of any particular organ okay so this is the transverse section of ovary and these are this is ovary and these two are uh, ovules and this is the placenta the bulging part is called as placenta and these two are uh, these two and these two and these two they are ovule and this part is called as locule so one carpel is equals to yoni locular ovary in polycarpillary syncarpous condition see two carpels are there one is this another is this so it is called as bi locular and if three carpels are there one two and three one two and three so this is called as trilocular and in case of four carpels one two three and four it is called as quadru or quadrilocular or tetralocular and in case of five carpels one two three four five it is called as pentalocular now we'll talk about the placentation what it is how ovules are arranged on the placenta within the ovary it is called as placentation see this is called as marginal placentation where is uh, one ovule is attached and only one locule is there hence it is called as unilocular ovary so ovules they are born at fused margin okay and it is seen in case of peas and bean in case of exile placentation it is multilocular ovary 1 2 3 three locules are present and this is exile placentation where ovules are born on central axis see this is the central axis unlike marginal axis wherein ovules they are attached with the margin and in this uh, they are present at the center axis and it is seen in hibiscus another mm, placentation is another type of placentation is parietal wherein ovules they are born on the inner wall see this is the inner wall and these are the ovules so this is unilocular ovary of multicarpillary syncarpous uh, gynoecium and it is seen in cucumber this is free central wherein all ovules they are attached with the center column and unilocular ovary is present and it is seen in dianthus okay and another uh, placentation is apical wherein ovules they are born only at the apex and this is unilocular inferior ovary and it is seen in this plant now another uh, placentation is basal and it is the last placentation type wherein uh, ovule it is attached at the base unlike apical wherein ovule was attached at the apex okay and this is seen in sunflower okay now 
let's talk about the floral symmetry three types of flower first is asymmetric flower it cannot be divided into equal halves along any plane also known as irregular flower students and this is an example which we call it as canna then comes actinomorphic flower wherein uh, floral whorls are of same size and shape and flowers can be divided into two equal halves along any plane see this way you can cut it and you can find uh, two equal halves it is also so uh, called as regular or radial symmetry flower and it is seen in dhatura and hibiscus too mustard is also an example of actinomorphic flower then comes zygomorphic flower flower can be divided into two equal halves along only one plane it is also known as monosymmetrical or bilateral symmetric flower okay delphinium is an example of zygomorphic flower because it has five parts hence it is um, called as bilateral symmetric flower and this was all about the flower in my next section of the presentation we'll study about the fruit and the seed so till then stay tuned and keep watching edupedia word videos thank you